All right, so I'll do this so you don't have to. So I ended up uh, having an extra MagSafe 2 charger cable. So what I want to do in this video is have some kind of way to uh, type C charge my 2015 MacBook Pro. This video should fall in relevance quite, I don't know, like how many people still have those, but uh, I still have mine. I love it. And uh, yeah, it would be useful to uh, be able to carry this around and just uh, piggyback off of everyone's Type-C chargers, phone, laptop, or otherwise. So this is why I'm doing this. Well, it's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I have this and I have to do something with it. And I'm not going to throw it away. So this is a YZX Studio, as far as I know, Type-C charger. Uh, Type-C trigger, sorry. It's using what seems to be an intercell uh, part. I'll put the data sheet up on the right side if I find it. Uh, right. Quite a lot of pins for what this is doing, but um, basically talks over the PD channel configuration line and asks for 20 volts. And if it doesn't find it, it backs down to 15, 12, 10. I'm not sure if it does 10, but uh, 9 and then 5. Uh, usually the MagSafe charger has a broken wire protection, so to say, built in. Uh, meaning that it pumps in a very low voltage. Uh, it feeds the supply voltage through a very big resistor and expects a known resistor at the other end, at the MacBook end. If it finds that, it then enables the power outputs and feeds all the power through the cables. So... In case it's uh, ripped and fucked, as most of these are, um, you lower the risk of a, of a house fire, basically. So we won't be having that. We'll be having 20 volts on here, which, again, yeah, th the main problem with this connector is uh, it is not the magnetic side, so this is not attracted to anything. But if a coin or something else drops into here, 20 volts, you have some capacitance in the charger, you will get some sparks, you will damage the connector, it will be weird for everyone, so... That will have to be kept in mind, but otherwise... Uh, um, what I'm a bit worried about is... This is a 45... So the charger designation is done by the one-wire chip uh, built into the end. So the middle pin is connected to a chip and they have a one-wire comm going back and forth, and the MacBook tells the chip what light to bring on. Green, red, and I've never seen them bring both on, but... Uh. And uh, it also sends back to the MacBook, uh, right, the serial number of the charger, some other shit, and the wattage, right? And the 45-watt charger does not work at 20 volts, which is what I want to feed through this wire. So I really, 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 really hope that all the DC-DC conversion done in the MacBook side is dynamic and is not pre-configured because that would be super stupid. But technically the MacBook should expect 15 volts from this cable at most and we will be pumping 20. It's probably only going to draw 45 watts so that probably it does regulate based on the based on what it finds here, but I really don't want it setting the buck converters to expect 15 and then pump 8 volts into my CPU because that would, that would be... I would have to kill myself, basically. We'll see. I don't know. I There's no information about this online. Some people did this with 12 volts, but that's, I don't know, that's weak shit. We can get 20 out of these. So without further ado, I think I will, um, the question is, do I, do I solder straight onto this or do I go with some more flexible wires? I'll see. I'll see. One thing to also keep in mind, these have a lot of uh, fibers inside both of the windings, both of the cores, cores, so to say. Uh, try to remove as much as that of that as possible because it will interfere with the soldering. Just as a little factoid, this is using Type-C, but 
it is not using power delivery. It's still talking over the USB data lines and it is a quick charge protocol. And it doesn't know PD at all. It's the TS80, the TS80P does do PD. I'm not sure if it does quick charge as well. It'll be interesting to know. I really don't like these DAGs poking out. One quick note, uh, the transparent heat shrink likes way higher temperatures. So I'm usually using transparent crap and I'm blowing it at 200. So really seems to like temperatures uh, that are kind of double the colored stuff. The colored stuff I usually blow at 100. But for short bursts, it works to just uh, use 200 as well. And uh, so negative goes to the shield and uh, we'll measure it. It's supposed to be the ones on the outside that are negative. So and the case is also negative. So that's fine. They've minimized the contact area between positive and negative. I'm thinking of just doing this to be very honest been thinking about this for 10 minutes by now I think I can just do it I really don't see why I wouldn't yeah I'm just gonna bring a zip tie and uh, tie this down I'm not against this so far. Okay, so this would be the final product. Uh, the heat shrink isn't really perfect, but I mean, it gets. It gets the message across that this is some DIY crap that Dari made in May 2022, so I don't know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm getting used to this more, uh, what's not steampunk, but this more handmade look because you can try making stuff as professional as Apple did, but it's, it's a lot of work and a lot of chance to fail, so I don't know. So the trigger should work both ways, let's see. So it sure works this way, and let's check the other way. And I'm good at this. And it works this way too, okay. And let's measure and check the polarity. So 20 on this pin, 20 on this pin, and zero on the outside. And I'm not sure what we can see in the middle ones. All right. Yeah, but these are close to the 20, so they should be tolerant to seeing 20 volts. Pretty nice. Some Zener arrangement. All right, let's bring the Mac. And they will be done. All right. Yeah, this, uh, 
looks about legit and it does cut out because I'm only using a puny <clears throat> uh, I don't know what this is I think it's 35 watts so it can do uh, 20 volts 1.5 amps so it's gonna cut after that and uh, this is gonna take 2.25 for 45 so yeah but uh, yeah, what does it do after it cuts off I'm curious boom oh yeah so it just does this hmm yeah, you can still charge like that yeah so uh, this is a a good result I'd say has its limitations but uh, uh, it's quite a bit of flexibility so I'll for sure be lugging this around from now on in the case of my MacBook but yeah that's been it have a good one.